starting now. We're on. Thank you. Well, then let's go ahead and start the meeting. Uh, this would be of the Prevention and Public Information Committee. Uh, it's June 10th. It's about 2.02. First on the agenda, I'm showing a report from Michelle on suicide prevention trainings. So Michelle, please head for it. Thank you. Just a brief update on two of the suicide prevention trainings that we facilitate. Um, before we do that, I did include some numbers. Um, we don't have um, 2018 yet. Usually BDH re um, releases their annual report in April and they've been um, focused on other things, understandably. So we don't have that report yet. So the, the most um, current numbers we have are from 2017. Um, and so in that year, there were 1,157 deaths by suicide in Virginia. They give you the breakout um, that 983 were Caucasian, 902 were male, um, and 208 were between, between the ages of 55 and 64. Um, so that's consistent within our planning district that middle-aged white men um, have the highest number of deaths by suicide within our planning district. I did um, add in a numbers from 2016 and 2017 to show you a difference. So it's about a 32% change um, between the two years, which is good, that we went from 55 suicide deaths in 2016 to 37 suicide deaths in 2017. So the next page um, for mental health first aid, um, oh, I'm sorry, starting with assist, we did have one very um, well-attended, well-engaged assist in um, early March. We did have to cancel one um, plan for April and um, April 30th and May 1st. We do have one scheduled for September 3rd and 4th. That was part of our original plan. And we are adding back a date in July um, and offering that to the individuals who were part of the canceled April 30th, May 1st training. So it says it's a two day, full two days, and it's an intervention skills training for community members. And we've doing that in our community for a little over a year now. Um, Megan Ortiz is my co-trainer for that. And then mental health first aid, many of you have taken, thank you. Um, we did do um, public safety, continues to be a big driver for that for all recruits participating at the Rappahannock Regional um, Criminal Justice Academy. So if they're going through jail basic or law enforcement basic, they get the full eight hour mental health first aid public safety as part of um, their process for the recruits. So in FY 2020, we trained 439 community members through 15 adult mental health first aid trainings and six youth mental health first aid trainings. So since we've started offering this training, we have now trained more than 2,000 community members in mental health first aid. So we're really excited um, to reach that big milestone for our community. Um, other partners from the past year, Mary Washington, the University of Mary Washington, we continue to train all of their resident advisors in the higher education module. And then um, Stafford County Parks and Rec hosted two trainings um, this past year. So we were really excited for the opportunity to partner and work with them. Um, I've also given you some tables and um, showing you how we've grown the program since we started in 2014, where the first year we um, trained 122 people and how we're up to um, 439 which is interesting that that's also how many we trained in 2018. So we continue to provide the trainings um, regularly scheduled throughout the community that are open and also partner with specific organizations to, to bring the training to their staff. Um, that's all I have on with there. What Jane put me on the spot for is that um, Fredericksburg is being considered to participate in the mayor's challenge. Um, Virginia participates in the governor's challenge and then um, they're looking at different cities. So what this is, is it's a partnership between SAMHSA and the U.S. Department of Veterans Affairs to provide support to cities and counties and localities um, through the, get, the governor and mayor's challenge to prevent suicide among service members, veterans, and their families. So it's for that, that population veterans, service members, and their families, and to prevent suicide among them. So participating communities get technical assistance and support um, from the state as well as um, on the federal level. And um, there's three main areas which 
we happen to already be doing. Um, identifying this population and screening for suicide risk, which our clinical division is doing that already as part of a statewide pilot. Um, promoting connectedness and improving care tra transitions. That's something that we work to do. And then increasing lethal means safety and safety planning. And uh, we've been giving out gun locks and medication lock boxes, medication deactivation kits, and other lethal means safety devices for many years. Um, so the, the key objectives are to strengthen capacity um, within our, our local leaders um, to prevent suicide death, to have a local strategic plan that aligns with the national strategic plan, um, to learn more about the issues facing this population, those three priority areas I talked about. Um, so that's an exciting opportunity. It was just um, emailed to the, to the mayor today, um, so we don't know if the city will, will um, like to learn more about it, but we are ready and willing to partner um, should they agree to it. So, and I'll just um, add, it's, it's not that, um, it's through SAMHSA and the initiative would provide technical assistance. Um, it's not a cost to the city, um, but it would, the timing of course is in question with, with so much going on. And at the Department of Behavioral Health, they also acknowledge the timing as a question to SAMHSA. And SAMHSA has approached um, eight other cities, and we have a list somewhere, but I, I won't pull it up now, but um, looking at, at initiatives. Um, and, and one of the nice things about Fredericksburg, and, and while it's to the mayor, there is an understanding that it would be our whole region and how uh, much we have um, veterans and their family members involved in, in our area to be able to reach out to. Um, but there is, the, the state did go back to Samson and say, you know, this timing is really bad. <laughs> and, and, and what, in terms of collecting data and offering any, anything else. Um, so there's, there's some discussion around there, but really it's just an opportunity for um, some education and prevention activities around this population and, and what Michelle went through in terms of promoting safety and those kinds of things. I, I would just add that I would, I don't know who's determining whether this might not be a good time. You said SAMHSA, is, that, is it because of financial or? Yes, yeah, it's, it's SAMHSA's initiative. Um, so it's the federal government, and so it's, yeah, um, I think they're the ones that are really uh, behind it. But I think in light of the pandemic and the anxiety and what people are going through, I think this is needed more than ever. I mean, this would be a great time to implement it. You're not yeah, waiting. I, yeah, waiting. that's, not yeah. Waiting because everybody's better. <laughs> yeah, that's, no, that's good. That's, um. That's yeah. another consideration. So we certainly respect, uh, you know, there are a lot of, um, lot of priorities right now. So that, that's the discussion. Yeah, I'm trying to understand clearly what would be the obligations or responsibilities on the part of the various cities. Um, and I guess, um, I think you said, even though it's technically something that was just sent to Fredericksburg, it would be region-wide. So what would they need to do other than say, yeah, sure, and yes, we'll meet with the technical assistance? But I don't know. <laughs> we would have to commit, so usually there's a two-day in-person training, um, and, that, and so it's forming a team, committing that team to a two-day training and to ongoing meetings and support and initiatives. So someone within the city would also take ownership and be a team lead to help guide the initiatives. Um, so Richmond was selected in 2018, one of the initial cities, and they worked with their region recognizing that um, Richmond Behavioral Health is in the city, but there are many other community services boards around and they work together as a region um, to, to do their initiative. So with the example in Richmond, did they not have to actually involve staff and commitments from the, the other cities as well? They did. The, the other thing to consider here is we're divided in five health planning regions and their region um, is very compact and close to one another. Um, and so it, 
melded well with their existing regional suicide prevention plans. Um, whereas we are five localities within Planning District 16, our health planning region is too vast um, to, to follow, follow that exact model that Richmond. So there's still, so I don't want to get too much down a rabbit hole because there's still stuff we don't understand or, or, or know about, about it. And then we're just learning. Michelle and I were on an introductory call last week about it. Um, but it is you know, with the work of suicide prevention that we're doing and our community, it's something of course we're interested in because of the importance of, of it. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any comments or questions about the earlier part of this report? Yeah. Greg, did you? No, ma'am. Oh, okay. Well, I know that I had one comment, and it has to do with the first aid trainings. It's wonderful to see that it's been over 2,000. I ask myself, how much do I remember of the training that I got a couple of years ago? So what occurred to me, um, might it be sort of easy to have sort of like a little self quiz that um, really is reminding people of the salient points that they need to know and so forth. They sent out to everybody uh, by email. Um, it's just a self quiz, no response needed to any staff. Um, just a thought. Thank you for that. <laughs> it is, your certification is good for three years. Um, so after those three years, you're welcome to, to take it again. National Council is rolling out a new curriculum. Uh, we hope to have it by now, um, but we do not. And so there will be new videos. Um, the, the theme of algae um, assessing for risk of suicide or harm, listening non-judgmentally, giving reassurance and information, encouraging appropriate professional and, and self-help will remain, um, but they will have some updated information <laughs> in the new, the new module. Okay, thanks. Well, then if there are no other questions or comments on that report, I think next we stay with Michelle, but move to understanding the ACEs training. Yes, this is a year-end summary for our ACE interface, understanding um, adverse child experiences and building resilient communities training we've been doing um, for three years now. And um, so far we have one more training scheduled. Um, we are gonna do one virtually for mental health staff at Mary Washington Healthcare. Um, so those numbers, those numbers will change a little bit. So through um, third quarter, we had done 22 trainings for a total of 626 participants. Cumulatively, we've trained 1,516 community members in this training. Um, big partners over the last fiscal year were Spotsylvania County Public School, who provided the training for all of their principals and assistant principals, as well as some of the, their um, individual schools. The Central Rappahannock Regional Library um, gave us an opportunity and Allison Standring reached 200 people in one day for two sessions, just doing the overview. And then right before the pandemic, um, we presented to the University of Mary Washington again. Um, we had done some of their education clinical interns uh, on two occasions, and then we had the opportunity to present to faculty and staff. And um, so we were really starting to build some momentum um, within that. So I hope that once um, people return, return to campus, that we can uh, resume those conversations and how we can better partner with the college to train um, faculty as well as um, students um, in the psychology department and the education departments. Any comments or questions uh, anybody has? I think the numbers look really great. Good Thank job. You. Yes, really good. You might have said this, but I just saw you're having an additional training on the 18th of June. Where is that going to be held? It's going to be via Zoom for staff at the hospital. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Thank you. Right 
Well, move along. Thank you very much, Michelle. Thank you. Um, well, I guess it'll be Amy and talking about websites, social media, and all sorts of technical stuff that I wish I knew more about. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, this is just a brief overview of what our website and social media has been in the past three months, which in a word, it's been busy, which is good. Um, so, the, um, what I thought was interesting, we had a lot of views on the website and I expected them to be almost all our staff portals since staff were working from home. But um, while that was the second most viewed page, people also looked at the, um, the 2020 plant sale, contact us, mental health services, and our COVID-19 updates, which had lists of resources and stuff for the community. Um, mental health services I thought was good because we have seen an in increase in people seeking mental health services during this time. So, um, that kind of connects where it shows where here we have these views and here's an action that people took. And throughout this time, keeping the website updated was um, a very busy thing. Um, we, there were 16 new blog posts, four new pages added, and five just completely new features added to the website. And there's a great typo there. It's Instagram, not Instagram, sorry. <laughs> and then our Facebook page was also very busy. Um, something that's been pretty awesome through this time is that the guys who live in our group homes are sort of having, some of the residents are having competitions among each other to see who can get the most likes on their posts. So, um, <laughs> It's, it's really awesome. One of the group home managers was like, don't feed this monster. But I said, it's great, we're getting all these posts and, and so much more engagement. Those are, are some of the posts that just do the most um, or get the most reaction. And so we've had a lot of engagement. Something that I think the number for from May 5th to June 1st was 8,699, which probably doesn't mean a whole lot. Um, so I really quickly looked up this week, for example, our engagement was 1200, which is how many um, people have engaged in our post in any way, either clicked to learn more or liked it or commented on it or shared it. Um, in that same time period, DBHDS had 492 engagements. Uh, MICA Ecumenical Ministries had 343. The Community Foundation of the Rappahannock River Region had 285 and Rappahannock United Way had 311. So, um, so that kind of gives you a perspective of what engagement looks like. And so then we showed some of the popular posts. So to kind of give you a, a view of what people are reacting to. This one here with the mermaid room is one of my favorites. Well, they're all some of my favorites, but. Oh, nice to have things upbeat. Yes. Um, I, we do put some serious stuff on there, but for the most part, I like to keep it pretty upbeat. And um, since these are the popular posts, you can see also that the upbeat posts are the ones that, that do the best in engagement and likes. And then we can move on to Instagram. Um, Instagram is relatively new for us. Um, as of today, we have 146 followers, so we've had a few additions since this. Um, this gives you an example of the kinds of things we're posting to Instagram. Instagram is much more visual, so it just um, shows pictures and, and we do some video on Instagram too. We also put out eight media releases from March through June. Um, as you can see, most of those involved COVID-19. Um, as we made changes to our services that would affect people seeking services or our community, we sent out new releases. And, and uh, at risk, I'm sorry to be interrupting, but um, these would go out to the local newspapers, to organizations, 
Yes, there's um, a really big list of people it goes to. It goes to um, all of the local media, which includes the newspapers, Fredericksburg Today, the radio stations. Um, we have a few area magazines. We have um, Fredericksburg Parent, Front Porch. Um, there's a new magazine in King George County Compass and a new Stafford magazine. Um, and then it also goes out to some um, leaders of community organizations. And do we have any way of knowing um, how many of these other media act on any of it? Um, for a lot of it, we don't. All of these ran in some form in the Freelance Star on Fredericksburg today, and um, I believe most of them are used um, at B101.5's website. Outside of that, I don't. Um, I don't have a good grasp. That, that takes doing. I'm just curious if we happen to know. Thank you. Um, then we have advertising, which is pretty um, self-explanatory. One of the new things we're doing, it um, was actually just included in Rooted in the cost of our advertising contract for the year with the Land Star is um, animated video series with BH Media. So um, that's been kind of fun. It, it started off, um, it was a little worrisome at first. Their first like rendition was a talking tree talking about trauma. And I was like, uh, no. Um, so I was almost like pulled the plug. I was so worried at that point, but um, we stuck with it. We had a lot of good meetings and um, I think we ha have a really good four part series. The first video has been released and it's gotten a pretty good response. Now when the Freelance Star releases a video and mm -hmm. I subscribe, where would I go see it? What would catch me? Um, so actually you can see it on um, the Freelance Star's website. And then it's on released on social media, so it'll come up as an ad on um, Facebook and Instagram. And um, I know, actually, recently I was um, had an app for a word game that I was doing, and it showed up as the ad for that um, in that app. So they just come up in different places. But we can also um, I've been talking with them about getting our own copies of the videos that we can run on our website and in our, in our own social media. Um, maybe, well, does anybody have any comments, questions before I ask one or two? No, ma'am. No. I think there's a little bit, there's a couple more things to, for Amy to go through. This is stuff that's already I can wait. Okay. Um, I think I also ran through two different items, two agenda items in one thing. I'm sorry. Got so okay. excited talking about all the things I've been doing. <laughs> okay. Sorry. <laughs> so um, they kind of all ran together. Sorry about that. Then there, um, here are, is a list of new um, this items that we created for the community. There was um, a printable coronavirus anxiety journal, a social story about wearing masks. When we first started talking about the guys in our group homes having to wear masks, I thought um, I should go and find a social story to help them uh, deal with that because it could be somewhat traumatic. And um, I couldn't find any, so, so we created one. Then there's a coping kit for caregivers of individuals with developmental disability. This is like, uh, I think it's a 42 page kit um, that just includes a whole bunch of, of different things because um, it can be pretty difficult for people who are home taking care of someone with a developmental disability during this time. They tend to really like um, structure and routine and that's all gone. I, I think we've all had trouble dealing with that. And so even more so when you um, don't have a full understanding of what's going on. And then the most recent thing we created was a flyer about our telehealth services because the Spotsylvania County School Social Workers 
wanted to have an easy way to let families know that even though our doors were closed, we still are offering services for them. And I believe that's it. Yeah, I think the, uh, what I'm trying to understand with so many different platforms and so forth is that when I see your summary here that talks about blog versus blog, can you remind me what a blog is? So a blog is a post on our website. Um, if you go to ravihanagariacsb.org um, and you click on news and events, there'll be different posts. And they're um, a little more transient than, than a page. They, I mean, they stay around, but they're, they tend to have a um, kind of brief, briefer appeal. Almost, almost like a conversation that, yeah. that shows First, up on the, on the um, website. So it changes, it's sort of alive. It, it, um, and it's much, much easier to create a blog post than to do other changes on the website, so. Which is how it's designed to be. A number of these topics look like they have their enduring value. Um, but apparently the format is more purely just text. Is that part of the idea? Um, yes and no. Um, we usually include images and uh, quite a few of them now have video attached to them. Um, but it's just more like, so a page might be about a service that we provide that someone's going to go and they're going to want to know about um, mental health services, like outpatient therapy. So they would go to the outpatient therapy page, whereas a blog is, um, it's like an article on our website, pretty much. It seems more personal. Yes, absolutely. And it might include references to other parts of the website for more information. Um, not only might, it, it always does because of um, search engine optimization. You have to link to different parts of your site through the blog. Um, so I don't ever do a blog post that doesn't link to some of our services. And since we're never writing about anything that isn't relevant to the services that we provide. The place to look is news and events. It wouldn't occur to me right off, but... So if you go to the website on the home page, um, there is, it also shows up on the home page and it shows up, um, hold on, let me, let me look at the website real quick and make sure I'm not lying to you. Oh, good, Brandy. I was wondering if you could do that. There you go. So if you go down to the bottom, That picture is so charming. Brandy, can you scroll to the bottom? Yeah, I'm just, I, it was on a different one of my screens, so I was just moving oh, it. Sorry. sorry. It doesn't make sense <laughs> to me. I apologize. One arm paper hanger. <laughs> okay, so is it scrolling on your screen? No. No. How about now? No. Oh, yeah. there you go. Okay. So, Keep going down. Right there, there. news and events. So the um, most three recent blog posts will show up on the home page. Then they also get categorized. So if you go to um, say mental health, there will be the three most recent blog posts that I tagged with mental health. Um, if you go to prevention, the three most recent ones that I tagged with prevention will show up on their page. Um, and a lot of these I tag with most of our services because um, a lot of these topics are cross disability. And what I'm realizing is that you've got a huge amount. I just need to get in the practice of scrolling down more. Yes, there's a Even lot. On home pages. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I hope I'm not the only one that's.
trying to keep caught up on all this. Appreciate it. No, absolutely. It's so much. Um, and the local NAMI Rappahannock uh, group has been picking up its web page too and we have lots of referrals to your sites on the oh, that's great. thank you oh yeah um i believe in our referral sources they have shown up so people are clicking um from there you can tell where they were last and um no it gives you a list of the top refers so um, for today, for example, our top referrer to our website is Facebook, um, and our second top refer, refer is DBHDS. And Fredericksburg.com, that's weird. But so it just, um, it doesn't tell, tell you every refer, but when they, when they reach the top for that day, you can see. So um, Facebook is always the top one. Yesterday's was Fredericksburg Parent. Um, Michelle and the prevention staff did a great article with them on um, building resilience. And so it looks like that article was referring several people to our website. So. The other article for Fredericksburg Parent um, recently was early intervention, which was also really well received. If you went on social media, that got a lot of looks yes. and interest. I said you can get that kind of follow-up feedback. Yes. You, you can just see, yeah, you can see, yeah. Um, so we've been talking about all sorts of social media and so forth, public information, media releases, anything else, uh, Amy, that you wanted to talk about or that anybody wants to ask about, comment on? <clears throat> okay, then. On the agenda, it shows other business. I have none. Anybody? I have. I have none. No. I have none. I have none. None. Well, I will say, <laughs> I said I have none and none. Then I come back. <laughs> um, uh, it, it. I do believe yesterday's meetings. We decided to do the board meeting virtually as well because that worked much better than a hybrid mat. So. Yeah. Um, keep, a, keep a look out for the link for the board meeting next week, and we will email and mail the packets as, we, as we've done. Good. Thank you. Yeah, that's so much better. I certainly appreciate your multiple warnings or, or reminders of the <laughs> website. That's uh, perfect. Good. Excellent. Excellent. And thank you, Amy and Michelle. Great meetings. Good information. Thank you all. Yes. Thank you very much. Well then, we are adjourned at, what's it, my computer doesn't show. 1236. Thank you. <laughs> all right, thank you all, take care. Thank Bye. you. Bye. 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 Bye.